Good morning and good afternoon, all of you. This is part one of module four. This will be more on implementing effective risk management. So if we go through the outline of that module four, you will be having an overview first about the risk and vulnerability analysis, which we did for ECA, like uh, during the period of COVID-19, just with the, uh, with the start of the pandemic. And then we try to look at recent vulnerability along with the COVID-19 vulnerability index for Africa, the risk and vulnerability index for the region as well. So I'll be talking about that in the first part of module four, the data and methodology used. So this is the first part before we link it to uh, effective risk management. So what we did when we calculated the recent vulnerability index for Africa, we used basically a macroeconomic perspective and we used data for 54 African economies from 1990 to 2020. The, the data we collected was mainly from the world development indicators. We use over data sources, but at the end of the day, the same data uh, was used by the World Bank through the World Development Indicators. So the data was from different surveys. I'm sure you know about them. The Demographic Health Surveys, the Living Standards Measurement Study, uh, multiple indicator cluster surveys, and also data from emergency events database to look at uh, uh, climate change, uh, impact of disasters, etc. This is in terms of the data, uh, in terms of the methodology which has been adopted, uh, we use the arithmetic mean, giving equal weightage to the different dimensions. I would refer to the different dimensions in a bit. And then the other method that we use to calculate the recent vulnerability index is the principal component analysis. Uh, we use two methods actually to make sure that we have robust estimates of the risk and vulnerability index. So uh, before go coming to the, the weights, et cetera, and the technique used to uh, do the estimation, first of all, whenever we build an index, like we've been referring to that in the previous module, module three, and even in, in the second module, we look at the dimensions that we will be measuring in an index. So in that recent vulnerability index, which I did for ECA, was looking at different dimensions. That is that we had uh, 11 dimensions in all with a set of 58 indicators. These dimensions range from living conditions, livelihoods and job security, education, population characteristics, health, epidemiological characteristics, social equity, poverty, and social protection, gender equality, governance and institution, natural hazards and disasters, and the last one, of course, being related to COVID-19 prevention and health recovery measures. Within these 11 dimensions, so we've got the 11 dimensions, we now need to look at indicators to measure uh, the different dimensions. So within these different dimensions, uh, we've got a series of indicators. For instance, living conditions, we uh, include access to electricity, access to drinking water, access to cooking fuel, access to basic sanitation. There were four indicators which we used to measure the living conditions dimension. In relation to the other dimension, let's say livelihoods and job security, some indicators relate to vulnerable employment, uh, food imports, food production index, unemployment rate, employment in agriculture, among others. Education is another dimension where we look at school enrollment at different levels, pre-primary, primary, secondary, and tertiary levels. Population characteristics include variables like elderly population, rural population growth, urban population, dependency ratio, among others, health, 
is basically in terms of infrastructure, but also in terms of uh, health workforce, hospital beds, uh, also maternal mortality rate, infant mortality rate, life expectancy, uh, universal health coverage. So there are specific indicators which can be used from the World Bank development indicators to measure the different dimensions and the different uh, aspects which we want to include in this risk and vulnerability index. For epidemiological characteristics, this is very important for a population. We looked at uh, the percentage of, of the population uh, uh, having diabetes or suffering from asthma or people and percentage of, of the population smoking or uh, having HIV. Uh, and then within social equity, poverty and social protection, we use the different indicators relating to poverty, like poverty headcount ratio. We also include uh, undernourishment, anemia among children, etc. Gender equality is another dimension within the index and which we believe is very important for the African region. So within gender equality, six indicators were used. Uh, they relate to women in decision-making, girls' school dropout ratio, female labor participation rate, uh, fertility rate, sex ratio, etc. Again, another important element within the recent vulnerability index relate to governance and institution. This is very important. Uh, and then it looks it takes on board the Kaufman Index uh, and where there are different dimensions there relating to an assessment of the institutions and policies of a particular country. Natural hazard and disasters uh, is another dimension to the index where we look at droughts, floods, ex extreme temperature. Then finally, the one that we wanted to, um, to factor in is COVID-19. And of course, when we did that uh, index, it was in 2020, and we had uh, measures like the stringency index, the number of COVID-19 tests undertaken by respective countries, COVID-19 containment and health index. So we had three indicators there at that point in time. And of course, new indicators and new measures have been used over time since the start of the pandemic in 2020. Now, Given we have the 11 dimensions and the different indicators used in relation to the different dimension, like I mentioned, there are two ways that we, two approaches we adopted in uh, coming to this um, risk and vulnerability index. We call it the RVI. One is arithmetic mean, where we give the same weight to each component, to each dimension of the index. So Initially, we calculated the index uh, without the COVID-19 uh, dimension because remember, we, we use data from 1990 to 2020. So uh, the data for COVID-19 was only available in 2020. So then we calculated the index only across 10 dimensions first, giving equal weightage to each dimension means one tenth. We divided by 10. We did that uh, when we refer to the uh, multidimensional poverty index, the global multidimensional poverty index, where we had three dimensions, if you will recall, giving uh, a weight of one third to each dimension. So in this case, we use 10 dimension, excluding the COVID one initially, so giving a weightage of 110 to each dimension that is an equal weightage. So then we also did the PCA, the second method, which I'm not reporting here, but it is there in the handout, which we provided to you. So uh, in this case, when we use the PCA, we use the STATA software and PCA generates its own weight for each dimension there and it's it's kind of looking at the data uh, at the trend which is there for each country and for the group of the African countries and basically allocate a given weightage. So whichever method we used 
the 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 range of a vulnerability the recent vulnerability index does not differ much and the range of low recent vulnerability index or medium risk vulnerability index or high recent vulnerability index the range of these different levels do does not vary by much uh, according to the uh, methods or approaches used so it does it's basically the same across the arithmetic mean and the principal component analysis that is the pca now having done that we have a range for the recent vulnerability index from 0 and 1. An index could be, we use 0 and 1, or you can use a 0, 100, whichever. And if the value approaches 0, it implies, in our case, low vulnerability. If the value nears 1, it infers high vulnerability. Now, once we get the values, it's because we, when we did the study, we wanted to compare African countries. So we need to have cutoff points. And in this case, we develop cutoff points in terms of what are those countries uh, which are basically in the low uh, range of RVI, medium range of RVI, the risk vulnerability index, and high range, high range of RVI. So we had this, if one country, for instance, has an index below 0 0.369, then I would say that this country has a low risk and vulnerability index. If a country has an index between 0 0.369 to 0 0.471, then it's in the medium range and it has, it is, it has a medium risk and vulnerability index. If the index of a country is 0 0.472 and above, then in that case, it is highly vulnerable. Yeah. So we calculated the cutoff point by using quartiles from the distribution of the sub indices over the period 1990 to 2020. In fact, I use the same methodology as the human development index, right? So uh, it depends on the dimensions you have. You can do your own index with your own dimensions and use arithmetic mean or PCA and then use the cutoff point to classify countries or regions. If you're doing it within a country with different regions, then you can also do it uh, by regions as well. Then we also look at cutoff point in terms of the different dimensions. The cutoff point I presented earlier was for the overall index, but it could be for some countries, they are more vulnerable in some dimension and less vulnerable in other dimensions. So it will be good to see where the problem lies in terms of recent vulnerability. And as such, you can know where you should target your policies, right? Suppose you, your country is highly vulnerable in the domain of education, then you know that there should be policies targeted to the education sector, how to encourage, let's say, more people uh, to, to go for higher education, for example, or prevent dropouts from secondary uh, level education, etc. right? Or it could be when you look at social equity, poverty, and social protection, you see that your country is highly vulnerable in that dimension. So what kind of policies can your government can come forward to, to, to reduce poverty, to alleviate poverty, and to have a number of social protection schemes to prevent, let's say, vulnerability to poverty and to alleviate the poverty situation in that particular country. Now, when we look at the, at the results which we obtain across the different dimensions for the African uh, continent, for the let's say the sample of African countries in the data, then we saw that they are highly vulnerable in those indicators, like uh, in those dimensions, like education, livelihoods and job security, social equity, poverty and social protection, gender equality, governance and institution, natural hazard and disasters. Why I'm saying that they are more vulnerable in these uh, 
particular dimensions because if you look at the value of the index, it exceeds 0.471, which means highly vulnerable according to our cutoff point that we saw earlier. So if we look back, it was 0.472 and above, it means high risk and vulnerability. So in this dimension, you will also see that if we go for, for the average, it exceeds that. And if we go for each dimension, you can compare and you will see that when it's beyond 0 0.5, then most, most of it means that it's in high, vulner it's a high recent vulnerability uh, index. Now, rather than going for the African region as a whole, what I did is try to split the countries into different groups, different regions. And we know the average for Africa is 0 0.451. Uh, in that case, if we look at 0 0.451, and it's basically in this range of medium risk and vulnerability index. But when we look at the different dimensions there, it's, it's much higher. So this is it, 0 0.451, which is for me in Africa. Then uh, when we look at the groups, you will see that for oil exporters, it's 0 0.471, right? So it's higher vulnerability for oil exporters compared to the others and oil exporters are followed by mineral rich countries. And this is followed by, of course, the mean for the African region, but then oil importers. I mean, why is that the case? In many, in many instances, oil exporters and mineral rich countries, yeah, they, they do benefit a lot because they export oil and they do benefit a lot of revenue. Um, it's a, a revenue generating activity, but in many cases, this, this does not trickle down to the population, right? And then there are other aspects of that particular country or group of countries which we need to factor in to see where the recent vulnerability lie. And in many cases, it's poverty, high inequality, high income inequality in particular, where the benefits from uh, exports of oil, for example, are not are not being uh, fairly distributed to the whole population. There are many people in poverty because they don't gain from that. Then rather than looking at the indicators as a whole, what we did is looking at the different dimensions. And you will see there that oil exporters uh, are compared to agricultural commodity exporters, mineral poor countries, oil importers, mineral rich countries, and also the mean for Africa. I did a spider diagram there to compare the different dimension across these different groups of African countries. And you will see from the diagram that uh, the yellow one is for oil exporters and they are more vulnerable in terms of governance and institution, in terms of gender equality because their index is much higher compared to the other groups in terms of health, right? Whereas you will have higher recent vulnerability for, uh, let's say, oil importers and also for mineral rich countries in social equity, poverty, and social protection. So it varies which indicator may not be performing well for a particular group of country, right? And we've seen that oil exporters, they do not perform well in governance and institution, gender equality, where the recent vulnerability is much higher. So there is a need for policy intervention in these aspects. Uh, and as a matter of fact, can reduce the recent vulnerability of the population in these different dimension. Now, next, what we did is instead of looking at regions uh, or the, the continent as a whole, we try to differentiate across African countries. And you will see that some countries uh, rank high in terms of, of uh, vulnerability because they have a high uh, index 
sometimes even exceeding 0 0.6, that is the case of Somalia, and exceeding 0 0.5, where you have a bit a, a number of, of countries uh, like Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Niger, uh, Guinea, Guinea Bissau, Cote d'Ivoire, Chad, etc. Down there with lower risk and vulnerability, you can find Tunisia, Mauritius, Libya, Cap Verde, Nigeria, I mean, a bit uh, 0 0.3, I think, for Nigeria, a bit more than that. But some countries down there, uh, you will see them with a low, lower recent vulnerability index in the range of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Then what was very interesting is to look at the COVID-19 index. Of course, at the time we were doing the study, uh, we were, I mean, many countries were having different waves of the pandemic, but uh, the data for COVID-19 keep on changing and it's very dynamic in terms of the figures which kept changing and also in terms of the indicators that, uh, that were used at some point in time. So when we look at that, we could see that countries in, in the agricultural commodity group, that is agricultural commodity exporters, had the highest COVID-19 sub-index of 0 0.548, followed by mineral-rich countries and oil exporters. These countries were highly exposed to the COVID-19 and were ha highly vulnerable to the virus. Having no, It's not only a health impact, but also a social and economic impact, uh, which make the which make it more difficult for them to, to manage. Again, we compare uh, COVID-19 sub-index across African countries, and you will see Tanzania there having high in, a high index, uh, Somalia, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Mauritius, Sudan, uh, with in, indices exceeding 0 0.7. But that was at some point in time, and if we we do it now, things of course things will be different. Or if we did it in twenty twenty one, things will be different. So that was at a point in time. Uh, I think we did it around November December twenty twenty, and and of course figures keep on changing. So this is uh, in terms of part one for module four where. We look at the index that we calculated for, for ECA on the recent vulnerability index, which uses macro data and which use my macro data mainly for comparison purposes, because uh, it helps to compare different African countries, not only in terms of risk and vulnerability, but also in terms of their uh, in terms of the COVID-19 sub-index. So that's why we adopted a macro perspective. But if you have data for your own country, household data, uh, survey data, then you can do uh, a similar analysis, uh, but adopting a micro perspective as well. So this is the end of part one of module four. Thank you.